everybody, welcome back to another grilling video. Today, we are gonna be doing a phenomenal one. Today is smoked chicken pot pie, all done out here on the Pit Boss Pro Series Combo. Uh, this Pro Series Combo just means pellet smoker on one side, gas grill on the other. This one has a side burner. Uh, you can use it on almost any grill you have. So this starts with smoking a whole chicken, and I'm not going to, um, to bore y'all with how to go about doing that. We actually just did a video on that not too long ago. I'll put a link to it up in the top somewhere here and, and down in the description. When this is done, we're gonna go ahead and shred that chicken up. For our chicken pot pie, we're gonna need about four cups of shredded smoked chicken. So that's probably a breast and a half on a three to four pound bird, maybe a breast and a thigh, or if you wanna pull off some of the dark meat from the legs and the thighs and then just supplement it with some shredded white meat, you can certainly do that as well. Let me show you all the ingredients and talk about how we go ahead and make this chicken pot pie on the Pit Boss Pro Series. All right, let's talk about the ingredients we need for this. We need shredded chicken, about four cups of it. So I have a measuring cup here. We're gonna put four cups of shredded chicken in there. Um, and again, you certainly wanna to try to use smoked chicken. If you did it in an Instant Pot, that works as well. But the whole idea behind this is a little bit of smoky flavor. We're gonna need some onion. You can use yellow onion, sweet onion, or even red onion. We're gonna use red onion today. Um, carrots, a couple of carrots, about two or so would be good. A lot of people will add some frozen peas to this for some additional color. I'm not a huge fan of peas, so I'm leaving those out. You can certainly add any other vegetables you happen to have. Mushrooms would be great in this as well. We're gonna need some chicken stock, which we're gonna make ourselves using the carcass from our smoked whole chicken. So we'll get that going in a minute. We're gonna need um, a little bit of cream, about a half cup of heavy cream, and that chicken stock, that's gonna help make our sauce when we get our filling ready to go. We're also gonna need two pie crusts. Let me give you a really, really simple recipe for pie crust. It's really easy. You take two and a half cups of all-purpose flour with a pinch of salt in it, and then you take two sticks of butter. You can use unsalted or salted. I use salted butter. I wanna have that additional savory flavor to it. You're gonna cut it up in little tiny cubes, and you're gonna throw it on top of the flour, and you're gonna pinch it together. If you can use the back of a fork, that's great too, or if you have one of those bakery uh, pie crust cutters, it sort of looks like several curved blades. A back of a fork works perfect, and you wanna do that until it has the texture of like uh, breadcrumbs almost. So what you've done is you've broken all the butter up and you've incorporated the flour around a lot of it, and it's this sort of um, grainy material. That's, that's what you wanna get it to. And then, real simple next step, you take a half a cup of very cold water, we use it right out of the refrigerator dispenser, or you can use it cold from your tap, with one egg beaten into that. And then you're gonna pour about three quarters of that into your flour and mix it up. You can use your fingers or you can use a big wooden spoon. I use something like this um, just to get it going. You mix that up real well and then you splash in just a little bit more liquid until you get it to form together into one giant ball. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to mix this a lot. We're not trying to develop any gluten. We want a nice flaky pie crust and this will do it because of all that butter in those layers of flour. It's gonna be this wonderful flaky uh, rustic sort of crust that you're gonna want over a pot pie. So I won't show that piece of it, really, really simple. If you ever want, um, I, I like to watch uh, Gemma Stafford from Bigger Boulder Baking. She has phenomenal recipes for anything that's baked, so I defer to her, and that's actually her recipe. It works wonderful. Not everybody in our house likes onions, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna chop up some onion. I'm gonna chop up two carrots nice and thinly sliced on the carrots, and I'm gonna saute those. And then I'm gonna put them aside in a bowl. We're gonna use those again later because I'm gonna to try to actually put half the filling with the vegetables and the other half without. All right, so let's start with just getting our onion chopped up here. All right, I'm just cutting these into some decent sized chunks. And now we're gonna go ahead and peel our carrots. All right, now for our carrots, we wanna just cut the ends off of these guys. And I like to just cut them a little bit on the bias, gives them a nicer look. I'm probably going about a quarter of an inch thick because I want these to be soft but not mushy inside of it. And that's the reason why I'm gonna saute them for about eight minutes or so and then just set them aside. And I'm gonna saute them in butter for that nice rich flavor too. I think that'll be plenty for half of the pot pie. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a pan going. I'm just gonna saute these in the bottom of the pan. It's gonna be the same pan I'm gonna make my chicken stock in, just be a little bit of extra flavor there. Tell you what, before I do that, I'm gonna start by just starting to um, shred my chicken. Now, you can do this with two forks in there, and this is cool, I, I made this thing yesterday. So I'm gonna just peel it by hand. I actually prefer to do that. To me, it gives it nicer chunks. Um, I don't want it to be really, really shredded like a chicken salad. I like to have little you know, chunks of chicken in there. Uh, and this is fully cooked, so really when we, when we bake the pie, all we're doing is heating everything up, 
and getting the crust nice and flaky and nice and golden brown. One of the benefits of doing this is you get to eat little pieces of your rotisserie chicken, even when it's cold, and it's delicious even then. All right, we're now gonna go ahead and saute our vegetables. I'm gonna put about four or so tablespoons of butter down in the bottom of this uh, saute pan. I'm using butter, it gives it a much nicer flavor. You've never seen one of these butter bells. These things are phenomenal. It keeps your butter soft and on the counter. Uh, you can just leave it out. Well, not in the sun, obviously. I'm gonna put it back here in the shade. I'll put a link to that thing down in the description. They're phenomenal on, uh, you know, they're just out on Amazon. All right, our butter's sizzling away there, so we'll put our onions in. I'll let these just get a little bit translucent, get some of their liquid out of them, and then I'll put the carrots in there next. Certainly want to go ahead and salt or season to taste. Uh, I'm using some of our smoked salt. I love using that. Uh, we have videos on how to smoke your own salt. I am a fan of using a little bit of the seasoning that you used on your meat in your vegetables as well. Not too much, but a little bit. I'm just going to leave this on low heat and keep on stirring it around. We just want these uh, carrots to get a little bit tender. Use whatever vegetables you want. This is a really flexible recipe. I mean, even for the meat, you can do chicken or turkey or ham. Uh, I think chicken pot pie is most traditional. Uh, carrots, peas, onions are very common. Mushrooms, you could do green beans in this. You can do a lot of different things. So feel free to use this as one of those ways to make a nice, warm, hearty meal with leftovers. Now that these are nice and tender, normally we would just add our chicken into this and we would begin to make our actual filling. But I'm gonna take these and set them aside I'm gonna do all the other steps, steps as you normally would with our chicken, and then I'm going to sort of divide that and make two batches of filling, one with the vegetables and one without for the rest of the family. But normally, I would just be dumping my chicken in here, adding my stock and some of that cream and a little bit of flour to get that beautiful roux going. Now, if you wanna make your own stock, if, you can certainly do that. Pretty simple. You just want to throw in little bits. That's the, that's the chicken neck, by the way. And you're going to pour in some water here, just enough to cover all of the bones that we have. So here's our, uh, here's our carcass. And you can see it still has a lot of meat on it. So I'm just going to put that whole thing in there. I had my leg bone that we used earlier and the bone out of the thigh before. We're just gonna crank this up and let it steep real nice. So our stock pot has been simmering now for about an hour and 15 minutes and I just have the carcasses in there and those bones you saw before. I kept checking the water level to make sure it was still good and I'm just gonna pour this through a little sieve into a bowl. I don't want any of the meat, little pieces of fat, the bits or bones or anything like that. Pour this right in there. Over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. So I'm just going to throw these pieces away here. I don't need these for anything else. So we now have our homemade stock sitting right here. I'm going to leave this on top of this cutting board. I just took a paper towel and I gently wiped some of the little bits of meat out of there but I'm okay that it's not 100% clean on the bottom. This is just remnants from our chicken stock, and we are about to make our filling for our smoked chicken pot pie. All right, so my butter is nice and hot. Normally, this is exactly the place where we would be when we were doing the vegetables before. I'm just gonna put in about a quarter of a cup of chicken. Really, it's just because I want something for my roux to begin to coat over the top of. So I'm throwing some of those in there, and I'm just gonna sort of Saute these around a little bit. Let some of that butter get infused with those. Now, if you were doing yours with the vegetables, here's exactly when you would just go ahead and pick up. Sauteing those vegetables, they get nice and translucent. You've cooked your carrots and your onions for about eight minutes or so. Get that on nice and low. And then you wanna put about a third of a cup of flour in here. And just stir it up and keep stirring. Just wanna sprinkle that flour around. Don't, don't pour it all in one giant lump then just mix this up. This is gonna be what helps thicken the sauce when we finish making this, uh, this filling for the pie. 
going to keep cooking this now for about four minutes or so. So the longer you cook a roux, the darker your sauce will be. Um, and that's kind of common across almost any type of gravy or sauce you're making with a roux. So I'm going to pour the rest of my chicken in here. And we're going to add in two cups of chicken stock. Now remember, we made our own chicken stock. I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a dipper here to get two cups. And both of those were a little low just because of the way I was holding it. There we go. Keep stirring this up. We want our roux to sort of work its way through all of this uh, pieces of chicken in here. As soon as I get that roux worked all through here, it's already starting to thicken up a little bit. That's phenomenal. Now, we're going to make this rich. Now we just want to mix this up real good. Look at that. And that's going to continue to thicken up with that roux in there. Now again, this would normally have vegetables in it. As I mentioned before, I'm going to actually divide this in half after this cooks. We want this to cook just until this is a nice thickness that we would ultimately want. Probably twice as thick as that. That would be a runny pie. Talking before about the thickness you want. This is kind of it. Look at that. That's what we're looking for. Now again, normally you would just let this cool down and fill it into your pie. I'm gonna... Now this next step is one you really should not be doing outside in the sun. We are working with our pie dough. And as I mentioned before, this pie dough has butter in it. So we really want to do it fairly quick and in a place that's cool. Obviously, I'm not cool in southern Florida out in the sun, but we're going to give this a try anyway. I went ahead and floured my surface a little bit here, and I have my dough that I made yesterday. I'm going to just break this in half. Well, let's start with all of this. And I'm going to sprinkle flour on the top of it just to see if I can keep this from sticking. We'll see how well this works. I'm just going to pinch it together where it broke there. We don't want any leakage in the bottom of the pan. Now, best way to pick these up and this is easier when it's not this long for sure but just take it on the roller and then unroll it over the pie plate i'm going to get this down inside here and up the sides instead of using my other puck of dough which i might be able to use for another pie i think i'm going to see if there's enough here to get a 10 inch diameter to cover the top of this there may very well be let's see I'm going to set this aside for a moment in half. So here is my non-vegetable half, and I'm going to do that on this left side here. And we got our vegetable filling on this side, then I'm going to smooth it all over here. Our top right over this. Now what we want to do here is we want to fold this on the outside of this. We're going to take this top lid and we're going to fold it right underneath the back side of it, pinching it along the way. We're going to make it look pretty here in a minute. Behind the bottom layer and we're just pinching it so it holds tight. We're going to make this fluted edge along the, the edge here. We're going to trim off this. It's a little bit too long over here. I'm going to keep on pinching this around. You know, it just dawned on me as I forgot where my vegetable side is. All right, now, here's a simple way you flute this. You put your finger right here. I'm going to do it with my finger. And then you take these two fingers and you just push between them. And you're going to do that all the way around. You can do it with your thumb and your fingers. It just takes a little bit of practice. Just keep your fingers nice and uh, floured. Now we just want to paint the whole thing with a nice egg wash. Make sure you get all down in these little crevices of your pie crust and on these edges as well. All right, and you can do this before or after you've actually uh, egg washed it, but you definitely want to cut some slits in this as well. Do about two inch long slits. And what that's going to do is let the steam escape from it and help keep the crust nice and flaky, which you definitely are going to want. You can get creative and do an interesting design if you'd like. Uh, a sharp knife certainly helps this for sure. You can also just use a plain razor blade. That works well. 
All right, we are sitting at 425 degrees. I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna place this on the top shelf. It'll take about 45 minutes, but about 15 minutes, I'm gonna actually spin that around. I wanna rotate it because this uh, pellet smoker doesn't have a very even heat all the way throughout it like your oven does at home. So rotating it helps make sure I don't end up with a darker um, crust on one side versus the other. So we'll come back and check on that in just about 10 minutes. That is looking phenomenal. That's rotated around every 10 minutes for the last 30 minutes or so. We are right at 40 minutes, and I've been rotating this every 10 minutes or so, and this looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and just set it here to cool right on our cutting board. I'll zoom in and show you what this looks like because it looks wonderful. We'll let it just sit here. It's risen up real nice. It just looks great. This looks absolutely wonderful. We put some smoked salt crystals on the top for a good savory taste. You can see here, listen to that. I don't know if you can hear it. It sounds nice and flaky, a little bit um, crispy on the outside, but you can tell by the way the fork comes out that that is good and juicy inside. I'm making sure that these vent holes are good so we can keep letting that cool a little bit inside. We'll let this whole thing cool a bit and then we'll come slice it up and try it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and give this a slice. See just how this looks. Look at that. That's exactly what we wanna see there. We'll go ahead and put that right down on a piece of plate here. Piece of plate, we'll put it right on a plate. That looks phenomenal. The crust is a little bit crispy on the bottom, and the bottom of that pan being so direct over the heat. Hmm. Man, is that good. Great flavor. The crust is absolutely delicious. <laughs> There's just no other way to say it. You've got to try this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you did, do us a favor, like it, subscribe to the channel, share it with others, and we'll see you guys next week for another grilling video. Smoked chicken pot pie. Everything done out here on the smoker. Bye y'all, safe and happy grilling.